Hello, my name is Miriam Udell, and I am Associate Professor of Yiddish Language, Literature, and Culture at Emory University in Atlanta. This summer, I've been teaching at Drisha in the July College Kolo. One of the striking things about Parshat Chai Sarah is that it begins, of course, with the death of our matriarch, Sarah. And Chazal draw a connection between her passing and the last major event to take place in the Torah in last week's parsha, which was the binding of Isaac, Akedat Yitzchak. Now, Sarah is almost absent from the text of the Akedah. In fact, in the Torah text itself, she is completely absent. And this is something that has bothered and um, interested various commentators on the Torah, really from rabbinic times all the way to our contemporary moment. Today I would like to look at a few different texts from different times and provenances that seek to put Sarah back into the story of the Akedah and therefore to connect the story of Isaac's binding with Sarah's death. So first I'd like to turn to Rashi who summarizes the basic rabbinic position on this. Rashi says, Lispod Sarah Valivkota, that Abraham came in order to deliver a eulogy for Sarah and to mourn for her. So Rashi says that the reason that this episode of Sarah's death is connected textually to the binding of Isaac is that the news of his near death was frankly what killed her. Her soul just disappeared um, from her body and she passed away. Now this theme of the Akedah causing Sarah's death is embroidered in more and more Baroque fashion throughout the, the generations of rabbinic commentators. In one relatively late commentary, the Tanukhuma Yalam Denu, we have the following account. And to save time, I'll just read the English. While all this, meaning the Akedah activity, was transpiring, Satan visited Sarah in the guise of Isaac. So Satan is coming to Sarah, pretending to be her son Yitzchak. When she saw him, she asked, what did your father do to you, my son? Presumably she knew that they had gone off together and she had spidey sense that told her that something had gone wrong. He replied, my father led me over mountains and through valleys until we finally reached the top of a certain mountain. There he erected an altar, arranged the firewood, bound me upon the altar, and took a knife to slaughter me. If the Holy One, blessed be he, had not called out, lay not your hand upon the lad, I would have been slaughtered. He had hardly completed relating what had transpired when she fainted and died. As it is written, and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. From where did he come, since the text says that he came? He came from Moriah the site of the Akedah. Now, if we fast forward in time, there's a connection made between Sarah's knowledge of the Akedah and her eventual death, but instead of just kind of passively hearing the news and then dying, Sarah is actually given an active role in trying to prevent the slaughter of her son. And in fact, for one 18th century commentator, not from our tradition, a Christian minister named John Farrer, who wrote all of this up as a play, The Trial of Abraham, and published it in 1780. For him, it was actually Sarah's intercession that changed her son's fate from the intended slaughter to um, God's command to find a replacement. So he has Sarah uh, approach the scene of the Akedah because she's had three bad dreams. The idea of Abraham doing something to their son just won't let her alone. So she comes to check it out and sure enough she finds her husband on the cusp of committing the, the violence against Yitzchak and she says, what's going on here? I had a bad feeling but this can't possibly really be happening and he says, indeed it's happening, God commands it, you need to go away until it's all over, and she won't do it. She says, I will make an appeal to the eternal throne and all the bands of seraphim for mercy that cannot move the heart of Abraham. Isaac, farewell, farewell my precious boy, farewell forever. No, 
thou shalt not die. So she's indicating that she's saying farewell, not because he's going to die, but because she knows that her end is imminent. No, I will summon all the powers above to your assistance. I will blow the trumpet that, gla that gathers all the ethereal thrones in arms and brings the rescue with a host of angels. So it's because of her advocacy as a concerned mother that the decree is softened and does not result in the death of Yitzchak. Finally, I want to mention one more source that, again, does not understand itself as Midrash, strictly speaking, but definitely understands itself as Midrash, or more accurately, Medrash, loosely speaking. And that is a poem by the Yiddish poet Itzik Manger, who published an entire collection of um, poetry that had Parsha-related themes, Chumash-related themes, and he called it Medrash Itzik, because he was Itzik, Itzik Manger. Partly because of his name, he identified very closely, very readily, with biblical Isaac. And the episode of the Akedah was an especially prominent one in his own consciousness. So he writes a lot of poems, a whole suite of poems, about the preparation for and then the carrying out of the Akedah. And I'd like to focus on one of these. Dimuter Sora Hotashver Gemit. Mother Sarah, matriarch Sarah, is in a heavy or a, a sad mood. And the setting of the poem is a very mournful one. It is on Saturday evening, just as the sun is going down, and Abraham is off at synagogue praying, and Sarah is alone at home with a very young Yitzchak who's still in the cradle. And she's doing what all pious women of Eastern Europe did at that, uh, at that time, at that time of the week. She is reciting the women's Havdalah prayer, God of God of Abraham. And so she is invoking God to protect her and her family, and she begins to cry. And there's a very lyrical passage where her tear falls down from her eye and it reaches a shadow on the floor and there's a conversation between the tear and the shadow. And the tear asks the shadow, Is Emes as Avram vil makrev zayn zayn kind? Is it really true that Abraham is getting ready to slaughter his son? Unoi bio farvos farven un farvel chizind. And if so, why? Wherefore? For what, so, what sin has this little boy committed? And the shadow says, shh, Sarah will hear you. And this is Manger's explanation of how Sarah comes to know in advance about the plans for the Akedah, um, which she is powerless to stop in his poem. She had more power in the trial of Abraham. But um, taken together, all of these sources bring Sarah into the text in a powerful way um, and say that she was connected to the events for which she was absent. Shabbat Shalom.